Hi, I'm Roberto Tinti, device modeling and measurement expert at Keysight Technologies. In this video, I'll share key best practices that enable accurate and repeatable on wafer RF measurements. To help you getting faster to your first measurement, the example project and other useful material are available for download. This is a state of the art 110 GHz DCRF wafer level measurement system. Notice the millimeter wave test heads, which are connected to the network analyzer and provide the RF signal to the device under test. The system includes a Cascade Microtech 12,000 semi-automated probe station and a pair of 110 GHz Infinity probes. On the bench, there's a 67 GHz PNAX network analyzer. DC supply is provided by Keysight B1500A DC analyzer equipped with four high-resolution SMUs. Additional Keysight SMUs are also available. Depending on the frequency, your system might look a little different, but it will likely have the same main components, a wafer prober, a network analyzer, and bias modules. One challenge is that instruments and probers come with their own software and firmware. In this system, the probe station chuck positioning, the wafer temperature, and the camera are controlled by Cascade software Velox. The RF calibration is controlled by Cascade WinCal XC software. Keysight Wafer Pro Express measurement software manages the whole system during measurements. Since the system includes so many components, it's important to only use software that have been designed and tested to work together. Let me start off by demonstrating our final goal, a fully automated test plan using a simple example project. We assume that the RF calibration has been performed and stored into the PNAX. The chuck is positioned to a known wafer map location called reference, represented by a device. Wafer Pro Express drives all the equipment and will be measuring two devices on each die. When clicking on the start button, the execution starts. The chuck moves from die to die. Within a die, devices are contacted and measured. After each measurement, measured data are analyzed and saved. The operator monitors status, pass-fail conditions, and if needed, displays the results. This simple example only lasts a few minutes. A real test plan can last several minutes, sometimes hours. Although this looks quite straightforward to execute, Configuring the system to achieve good accuracy requires due diligence and a fair amount of expertise. In this video, I'd like to share a simple step-by-step -step procedure that will help you to get your RF measurement right the first time and show you how productivity can be dramatically increased by automated measurements. As we go through RF calibration, wafer alignment, test plan, setup and execution, look at the banner on the top to see which topic we are covering. Let's start with RF calibration, which is really the key to successful measurements. Calibration shifts the S parameter reference planes down to the probe tips and compensates for losses and phase shift due to cables and other components. In most systems, calibration is done by measuring known standards on a dedicated substrate to compute the correction coefficients. For cascade probes, this substrate is called impedance standard substrate, or ISS and includes various sets of device standards. For calibration, we'll cover probe planarity and alignment, RF power level, automation, and verification. Probe planarity ensures that all the probe tips touch the surface at the same time as contact is made. Incorrect planarity leads to inaccurate and unstable calibrations. Here's an example of non-planar contact where only the lower tip of the right ground signal ground probe touches the surface. By manually adjusting the probe positioner, we rotate the probe as necessary. After each adjustment, we touch down and visually check the marks. We might need to repeat a few times until all tips make good surface contact. Assuming that the ISS alignment to correct for any mounting angle has been run, let's now set the contact height and position the probes on one of the ISS alignment marks. To avoid damaging your probes, always make sure the prober main lever is down when setting the contact position in Velox. Probe positioning on the alignment marks does require some hands-on experience. Practice a few times until you reach a perfect probe landing and skating.
This is really the key to a repeatable calibration. The input power during calibration must be as high as possible to maximize the signal to noise ratio. Typically minus 10 or 0 dBm are good RF power levels. However, when measuring active devices, power might have to be decreased. One way we can check if the signal is too high is by measuring the IV traces with the RF power turned on. Here's an example of a 4 by 4 device. The red IV traces are measured with an RF signal level of minus 20 dBm. The signal clearly affects the bias points and the device is now operating under nonlinear conditions, invalidating the S parameter measurements. The blue traces are instead obtained with a lower signal level of minus 30 dBm and show that the signal does not affect the bias. Here's a summary of a few tips uh, regarding power level. Calibrate at high power level and measure lower power as long as there are no changes of the alternator settings in the PNA. You have to experiment with the device, but as a rule of thumb, you should calibrate no more than 10, 20 dB higher than the level used for measurement. Finally, use power slope when measuring across a wide frequency range. I always recommend running the calibration automatically, especially above 50 GHz. The video clip in the background shows an automated calibration executed by Cascade WinCal software. WinCal steps to, contacts and measures each standard. Then it computes the calibration coefficients and stores them into the PNA. It also performs a first check of the calibration results based on known models of the standards and probes. WinCal can also check the calibration stability. This is typically done by comparing a new measurement of an open to the data measured during calibration. During a long test plan execution, Wafer Pro Express can periodically trigger the stability test to validate the calibration. This is very important to make sure measured data are still valid. The best way to check calibration accuracy is to measure other known devices. As an example, I'm now showing a one-port measurement of a transmission line located on the ISS. As expected, the reflection coefficient clearly shows the behavior of a line stub. At Keysight, we use a special substrate with known devices like transmission lines, beta standards, and others to verify the newly installed systems are functional. If you can measure at least one known device and validate that its data makes sense, it will highly increase the level of confidence in your calibration. Let's now consider the wafer loaded on the main chuck. This key site wafer includes high-frequency PHM devices and production mimic circuits. Since the wafer map is unknown, we first start with a default wafer map. Velox Automated Wafer Alignment uses pattern recognitions to map the wafer. To begin, we just select a repeated pattern on the wafer, as shown in the green box, and click Next to start. The algorithm is now running and Velox explores the wafer using the high-resolution camera to search for the pattern on each die. When the alignment is done, it calculates the X and Y dimensions of the dies, any wafer rotational correction, and finally creates a new wafer map. As a final check, let's move around the map from die to die and verify that the alignment is correct. In this example project, we'll be measuring two PHM devices on each die. The camera shows the chuck located on one of these devices. We call this location the reference in the home or reference die. If the number of duties is not too large, which is often the case for RF measurements, the subside table can be built in Velox by simply manually moving the chuck to each device location and using the plus button to add the current position to the table. Once the locations are recorded in the table, Velox can easily move to the devices with a simple double click. Other locations such as open and short structures might also be added. After successful calibration and wafer alignment, Keysight Wafer Pro Express is now ready to take control of the equipment. Instruments and their options are set up in the hardware connection window. The PNAX and the B1500A are selected as instruments, while Velox is selected as prober controller. Velox and Wafer Pro Express communicate through a dedicated server. The green light indicates the connection is active. Clicking on the Initialize Setup and Start Prober buttons initializes the connection and sets the reference position to the current chuck location. 
A dialog asks the user to confirm that the chuck is indeed at reference. Before proceeding, I recommend testing prober connectivity by using some of the basic buttons, such as probe separate or contact. In the PNA instrument option table, I set the optimal RF power level. After some experiments at different power levels, the RF power is set to minus 20 dBm. In absence of a power calibration, this power is leveled across the frequency range at the PNA front panel output ports. At millimeter wave frequencies, the actual power at the DUT in this 110 giga system is indeed a lot less due to the losses in the heads, cables, connectors and probes. The other PNA settings are consistent to those used during calibration. The next step is to synchronize the wafer map. With one click, Wafer Pro reads the map information from Balox, including the home dial location. The subside table lists the names of all the subside locations and their intraday coordinates. If desired, the subside table can be read directly from Balox or loaded from file. Velox and Wafer Pro are now fully synchronized and ready for real measurement actions. Next, we define the measurement sequence in Wafer Pro. On the left, I created a sequence by selecting the wafer, the temperature, and the dyes to be measured. In this example project, available to you on the download link, we measure five dyes at 27 degrees Celsius. On the right, the device table lists uh, the sequence of devices to be measured on each die with their tests, also called measurement groups. In this example, we're measuring two PHAM devices, open and short dummy structures. The test performed on the transistor includes a DC test and bias S parameter sweep measurements from 100 MHz to 110 GHz. At this point, we can start the test plan. Wafer Pro asks the user to confirm chuck location on the reference position and that the target temperature has been set. During execution, Wafer Pro displays the status and the results of each measurement. Measured data can easily be displayed as well. Since we've already seen the test plan running in the first part of the video, let's not wait until it ends. Instead, before concluding, i like to briefly touch on the test definition and show you the power of the programming environment. As an example of typical RF data post-processing, let's take a brief look at the test used to measure the HEMP devices and see how the de-embedding was implemented. In Wafer Pro, routines are organized in the library manager. The routine PHEMP SP includes four single tests, also called setups. The open and the short setups are just collecting row S parameters when measuring open and short structures. The DCIV test measures the IV traces, and the SDUT setup measures S parameter versus frequencies at various bias points. The embedding is done using the programming environment. To view or implement programs, we select Edit Transforms. The WPRO Analyze function is automatically called after the device has been measured. Here, we can implement custom data checking and analysis. In this case, the well-known algorithm that uses the SYZ metric transformation to de-embed row S parameters data is implemented. I'm just scratching the surface here of what can be done by either using Python or PL programming, and you can look at more details in the project. In general, programming provides a very powerful way to customize not only data post-processing, but also data validation. In this video, I've shared a complete step-by-step -step flow to execute wafer-level RF measurements. We covered topics like prober setup and RF calibration. We learned the importance of choosing the right signal level, discussed how to set up automated measurements, and took a quick look at the programming environment in Wafer Pro Express. Of course, experience is still an important factor. To help you to have a jump start, the project example used in this video can be downloaded from the link shown here. In addition, as a reminder of the tips and tricks that I covered, I've summarized my RF measurement golden rules in a short PDF document, also available in the download page. Thanks for watching. Please don't hesitate to contact Keysight Technologies for more information about wafer level measurement solutions.